Hi, my name is Brittany Bird, and today we're going to be talking about garden strawberries. The kingdom for garden strawberries is plantae. The phylum is Magnoliophyta. The class is Magnoliophyta. The order is Rosales. The family is Rosacea. The genus is Fragaria. The species is Ananassa. Now we're going to talk about why it's in the family, genus, and species that it is. Rosacea is a rose family. Rosacea is one of the largest families of flowering plants. There are about 3,400 species in the Rosacea family, and it includes roses, apples, berries, peaches, plums, cherries, and there are many more. Fragaria comes from the word fragans, which means odorous. This is because the flesh of strawberries have a perfumed odor to them. Fragaria include all species of strawberries. They are perennial herbs that grow low to the ground and have white blooms that have three hairy sawtooth edge leaflets. The blooms of Fragaria grow on top of woodless stalks that grow from the crown of the strawberry plant that you can see here. Fragaria also have the ability to spread by runners or stolons as they grow and mature. We will talk more about runners and stolons a little later, but you can see an example here. There are more than 20 different species of Fragaria, and while their size may differ, the only way to positively identify them is by the amount of chromosomes the plant possesses. Strawberry plants have a basic set of seven types of chromosomes that they have in common. There are diploid, tetraploid, hexaploid, octoploid, and decaploid varieties of the plant. So a strawberry plant can have anywhere from 7 chromosomes to 70 chromosomes. Generally, the more chromosomes a strawberry plant has, the bigger and more robust the actual strawberry is. But it is important to remember that it is only a general rule and is not law. Some strawberries with the most amount of chromosomes have the smallest strawberries produced. Strawberries are able to adapt to a very wide variety of climates. There are only a few places in the world where you will not be able to find a strawberry plant growing, and these places are Africa, New Zealand, Australia, and Antarctica. In order to be able to produce a harvestable berry, a strawberry plant must have at least six hours of direct sunlight per day. Any less than six hours of sunlight and the plant will be unable to produce strawberries and may die. For optimum strawberry maturation, full direct sunlight is best. Strawberry plants are picky about their living conditions. They have shallow roots, so they always need a sufficient amount of water. But they also need to be in an area with good soil drainage, because if excess water builds up around the plant, it could cause the plant to rot. Not only does the soil need to have proper drainage, but it also needs to have the nutrients that are needed for a strawberry plant to grow. The soil needs to have a sufficient amount of organic matter mixed in. Many people suggest when trying to grow your own strawberries to mix potting soil with a rich compost or manure to obtain the nutrients your growing strawberries would need. Also, because of the strawberry's shallow root system, they do not fare well in drought. So, don't be surprised if when there is a drought in California, the prices of strawberries go up because California produces 75% of the strawberries produced in the U.S. every year. Strawberry plants reproduce in two different ways. The first way is by seeds, and the second way is by runners or stolons. Seeds sprout in the late winter or early spring when the temperatures begin to rise after the cold months of winter. It is important to remember that each seed is genetically different from the parent because of pollination. Runners are stems that grow along the top of the soil. The runners can grow as far as 3 feet from the mother plant, but normally stay between 6 and 18 inches. Once the runner has found the optimum growing place, a place with plenty of sun and water, it sprouts a bud. The bud will grow and mature, forming its own root system. Once the bud has formed a root system capable of sustaining the new strawberry plant, the runner begins to wither and die, leaving a new independent plant that is genetically identical to its mother plant. Strawberry plants normally begin producing runners after they have produced their first flowers of the season. 
Plants that are formed from runners are normally established later in the spring all the way through the beginning of the fall. Runners that grow beneath the surface of the ground are called stalins. Some botanists consider runners and stalins to be the same thing, so it is important to remember whenever you're reading that some botanists will use these interchangeably. As fall begins, the strawberry plants begin to form buds in their crowns. The plant then goes dormant for the winter. When the temperature begins to rise, the buds emerge out of the crown of the plant and grow woodless stalks. They then bloom and pollinate. After the pollination process is completed, a mass of tissues with the plant seeds on the outside begins to form. The mass turns from green to white and finally to red. Once the mass or strawberry is ripe, it looks appealing to passing creatures and is eaten by birds, animals, and yes, even humans. The seeds are then able to move through the digestive tract of their carrier unharmed and are planted when the tree creature defecates. Normally, a strawberry plant will live about five to six years, but after three productive years, the strawberry plant's ability to produce strawberries begins to decline until it ceases altogether. Once the plant is unable to produce strawberries, it is normally overcome by opportunistic fungi and dies. Now let's take a more in-depth look at the anatomy of a strawberry plant. As you can see here, their root system is very shallow, not more than a few inches deep. It spreads more outwards than downwards. This is why a strawberry plant does not do well in drought and needs a sufficient amount of water. You can also see the crown of the plant, which crown is a good word since that is the king part of the plant. Everything grows out of the crown. The leaves that grow on woodless stalks grow out of the crown. The buds that produce the strawberries also grow out of the crown. And as you can see here, the runners and stalins also grow out of the crown of the plant. You can also see the three sawtooth edge leaflets that are indicative to strawberry plants. This picture also shows a very long runner that is producing not one but two daughter plants. It is also possible that after the first daughter plant is formed, the runner will stay from the first daughter plant and go to the second daughter plant until the second plant is formed as well. You can also see the beginnings of a third bud on the very end. This bud also may form another strawberry plant. It will be genetically identical to the other three plants seen here. Strawberries are not actually berries at all. The definition of a berry is an organism that has a thin skin and a pericarp that is relatively soft when the berry is ripe. Many times, berries are the ovaries of plants. Many things we call berries are not actually berries. Things like blackberries, blueberries, strawberries, and others. Some actual examples of berries are tomatoes, grapes, bananas, and eggplants. It is not documented where strawberries got their name, and it would be difficult to find out since people have been eating the red fruit since the Stone Age. The actual word strawberry started out as the Old English word strawberry, which when broken down, Straw means straw, and burridge means berry, but no one knows where this originated. Some people believe the plant could have been called straw because the runners look similar to straw whenever they begin to wither after producing a daughter plant. Others still believe the name come from the Anglo-Saxon verb for strew, and through the many years the word has morphed into the more user-friendly strawberry. Most people, however, believe the name came from the early farmers that found strawberry plants growing in their straw as it, as it dried. They then began using straw to mulch the plants because it provided a way to keep the plant properly watered but also gave a dry place for the strawberries to mature without rotting. The first strawberries ever cultivated were in ancient Persia, 
The Persians called them Tutsferangi. They then took the seeds with them on the Silk Road and used them for trading. This spread the strawberry plant to Europe and all the way to the Far East. The first botanical illustration of a strawberry plant on record is from 1454. But, since strawberry plants were eaten in the Stone Age, there are documents of drawings of strawberries as dated as far back as then. Native Americans were already consuming strawberries before the colonists arrived. It is believed that the colonists used the recipe from the Native Americans strawberry bread as a base for strawberry shortcake. The Native American strawberry bread was made by mixing together crushed strawberries and cornmeal and baking it over a flame. Currently, there are a wide variety of different experiments being performed using strawberries. Some that I found interesting were the use of strawberries in cloning and the effects of cold on antioxidant capabilities of strawberries. There is also research being conducted mixing the DNA of strawberries with other fruits. So who knows in the coming years what types of fruits may be available using strawberries. Now, please have a look at my resources that I used. I hope you enjoyed and hope you learned a little bit about garden strawberries. Thank you.